Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Mr. Mario, and yes, I know normally for this series, which is a little irregular because I don't really bring this out that much, and for anybody who's followed my channel since about the summer or so, there's a series that I kind of did called College Pro Tip, and listen, I haven't done it in a while, I apologize. And I really don't have a reason for not doing it, like, I just, I have not done it. But to be fair, I've dropped a bunch of other content on this channel, so I really hope that can help for something. Anyways, for anybody who is interested in this, I mostly made this series just due to the fact that there are a lot of people on my channel who are in my age bracket, and if you're not in my age bracket, you know, I'm currently 20 right now while doing this, uh, if you're not in my age bracket, you might be, I don't know, going to college, thinking about going to college, you're in college, anything like that. This is for you, and I've done a few tips here and there, or normally I do vlog type videos when I talk about this stuff, and I'm sorry, I just really don't feel like getting on camera at this moment, so that's why I'm just doing this in commentary fashion, but enjoy the gameplay. But anyways, I'm not really talking about the gameplay here, I'm going to be talking about grades, and this is one thing I feel like I can help other people out with, and this is how to get your grades up, and how to get noticed and everything in class, and really how to get on a teacher's good side. So first off, I want to talk about getting on a teacher's good side, okay? Now listen, for anyone who has not gone into college yet, I'm assuming you're still in high school or you know you're thinking of going, let's just say you have not done any type of college courses yet. You all might remember, in middle school and high school, you know, the real nerdy kid, the teacher's pet, the socially awkward kids... Those were the ones who were raising their hands in class. They knew the question. They, they knew the answer to every question. They were the real brainiacs. And, you know, even you might have been that person. And you might have gotten made fun of. And, you know, don't feel bad if you admit it. Like, listen, I remember, I can't really call these people friends because they really weren't. They were just some people I hung out with who were kind of assholes. But anyways, I, I remember they made fun of me because I would raise my hand in class and answer questions. Honestly, thinking about that now from an adult's perspective, that's incredibly stupid, and I have no idea really why I was made fun of for it, because, you know, if anything, that shows there's something good going on. But anyways, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, you might be coming from that background where it's bad to raise your hand and all that. In college, no, it's different, and this can set you apart from other people. First off, when you're in college, compared to high school, you're going to have lectures and such. And let's say when you're going into college and everything, your first two years are going to be the same as high school about, I want to say. Uh, not really so much as, you know, cliquish, popularity, things like that. Not really the social aspect. Social aspect is completely different. I'm talking about in the classroom, though. It is a lot like high school due to the fact that you really don't do anything tailored to your major until about your junior year of whatever major you are pursuing. But those first two years, you're gonna be knocking out your English, your math, your science, things like that. Uh, like for example, right now, I'm doing management information systems in the College of Business. Am I going to need physics? No, I'm not in my major. I'm not going to use physics, but I had to take it anyway. So it's just stuff like that. But anyways, getting on to the topic at hand as to what I'm trying to talk about here. Really raising your hand, answering teachers' questions and all that, that is how you can get noticed in these big lectures. And that's what I was trying to come back to. You see, going from a lecture, well, a small high school lecture to a big lecture, you're going to be in these lecture halls. You're going to be sharing a classroom with about 200 other students if you're going to, you know, a regular four-year university. And that's going to be really different. And if you go to, you know, a two-year university or a community college, anything like that, you know, do your own thing. And a lot of times, that could actually be better. The classes are cheaper, and you get a more one-on-one -on -one experience. And it's a nice, it's the perfect middle ground, honestly, between high school and between, like, you know, an actual university and such. So, if that's something you have to do, I'd recommend it if it's something you have to do, if it's going to better yourself. Listen, in short, what I'm trying to say here is, don't be a know-it-all in class, and don't answer every single question but a buddy of mine who graduated with an engineering degree and now he was doing the same degree as I was, you know, we had talked about it and both of us had engineering backgrounds. In case you don't know, I had a computer science degree and in short, when I was in computer science, I nearly hated my life. So I decided to switch over to MIS. I'm loving it so far. Don't worry. I'm not contemplating, you know, horrible, terrible things anymore. <laughs> Anyways, getting off of that. 
A buddy of mine and I were talking about this, and, you know, he did pretty much the same thing I did. Now, both of us, he's taking higher level courses than me, but both of us are kind of the people who, when it comes to, you know, our major specific classes and such, we're really the only people who are answering questions. And, you know, maybe the first one or two questions we'll just immediately answer, but then after that, it's like we wait like five or ten seconds for the teacher, you know, to ask the question and everything, and if nobody's answering, we'll go ahead and answer it. Teachers notice that. They really do. And it impresses them. And it helps them out. And it gets to let them know who you are, who exactly you are and everything. I'll actually give you all an example. And I, I like sharing these examples because I can share them with you all on here as this is, you know, kind of a technical-based channel and such. I was taking a visual basic course. This is like a 300 level course. And what happened the first day, our teacher was explaining how you could download Visual Studio through our university. And he was saying, okay, now this is what you need to do, you guys. You need to go onto the website and sign in and you need to download a file. But it's not a regular file. This is called an ISO file. Now, what you need to do is you need to take your DVD and you put it into your computer and you click the ISO file and you burn that ISO to the DVD and then take it out and put it back in and then you install Visual Basic or Visual Studio, that's what it is. And I just raised my hand and I said, well, actually, sir, uh, what you could also do as well, if you have WinRAR installed on your computer, which is a free program, you can just right click and extract the ISO and from there, you can actually access the EXE within the file and you can install it that way much faster without burning anything. And then he was just looking at me. He's like, well, uh, uh, okay, if you all want to do Danny's method, that's fine. And then another person chimed in and they said, well, Daemon Tools also works. And another person chimed in and said, well, Windows 8 has something native as well. And then I came back and I said, yes, you could use those as well. Those are all good alternatives. If you're on Windows 8, you could mount your ISO automatically, do things like that. But if you're on Windows 7, you could either use Daemon Tools or you could extract the ISO, both of which are free. This guy, th this guy, he has a PhD, and he was just mind blown. Now, the first day of class, I had answered quite a few questions and such because I had had, you know, that programming background. But I remember at the end of class, this is a good thing to do as well. With the first week of classes, introduce yourself if you can to your teachers. So I went up to him. Before I even said anything, he looked at me. He just put out his hand to shake my hand, and he's just like, you did really good. Like, that's what he said. And I have to say, it's a pretty good feeling when I haven't even gotten my first degree yet, yet I'm impressing these PhD professors with just my knowledge alone. Now, speaking of that, I've talked about talking in class and all that, where you might have to get out of your bubble of comfort, but go ahead and do that. I've talked about, you know, the teachers knowing you and everything. Now, I'm actually about to drop a good little bit of knowledge on you all as well that a lot of people really overthink or they don't think about at all or they just don't see the relation between anything. I'm going to give you all a, a little bit, I don't want to say a cheat, but a little bit of a life hack, so to speak, in the university world. And this, it's not a guarantee. Before I say anything, it's not a guarantee. But this could potentially get your grade up with minimal effort in a class. Now, you might be wondering, Mario, what, what are you talking about? Do you want us to, you know, print test answers on our bottles of Coke or something? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It is completely legitimate, and I'll tell you all this little secret that isn't a secret at all. Are you ready for this? All right, all right, all right. Come closer. Go visit your teachers after class. Now, you might not think it has anything to do with it, but listen... If you're having difficulty with a class, definitely visit your teachers and go get some tutoring if possible. Many universities for those beginner level courses or even, you know, higher level courses, they have either very cheap tutoring or free tutoring available. If those things are available to you, you are paying that with your tuition. You should utilize those extra tools and such. And while it's with teachers and such, you should visit them. Uh, first off, you should at least visit them if you are taking tests and all that, which you're going to be taking tests in your classes. But you see, in college, what many professors do, because they want to prevent cheating later on and such, what they do when they assign tests, they do not give you the test back. You take the test on a Scantron, you give the test and the Scantron back to the professor, and then later on you wait for your grade and you get to see your grade 
and maybe you get to see your answers, but they don't give you the actual test a good majority of the time, especially in those higher level classes. They like to stop doing that, although a few teachers do it here and there. Listen, first off, let's say you, you don't do that well on tests. Let's say you get a D on a test. Immediately, talk to the teacher about them. Send them an email and ask them. First off, look at their office hours. But if they don't have any office hours that work, or, or even if they do have office hours that work, because this would apply for this, go ahead and email them. And for another thing, email. Oh, my God, that's huge in college. Just get used to using email. But email them and say, hi, you know, Professor Smith, my name is, put your name here, uh, I would like to see what I messed up on on this test, and if you have some free time, I would like to go over the answers with you and such. Make sure you address them professionally, everything like that. Give them a time, anything like that, and just give them your free times that you're available, and trust me, that will really help out. And a good majority of the time, you could also start talking to these teachers about other things as well, either relate to the class, or you know, you could just start shooting jokes with them and everything. Now, am I saying you know, really try and go out of your way and all that. No, 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 no. That, that's not what I'm saying. Let it all come naturally. But mo look at them as more like, you know, kind of a potential friend that you're meeting for the first time. And that really helps out. Now, I'll, I'll say it like this. A teacher, it's good if a teacher knows you for sure. And I had to collect my thoughts right there. That's why I paused a bit. But I was going to say, originally I used to say, you know, the only times a teacher should know you are if, if you're doing really good or really bad in a class. And if you're doing really bad in a class, that's bad if a teacher knows you. But thinking about that now, actually, I recently changed my mind and I said, no, that's really not the case. You see, I'm actually going to, you know, give you guys a real life scenario again. Previously, I had a econ class. This was about a year ago or so. This was my hardest class I had a year ago because... I, the teacher was hard, and I just was not understanding the material personally. Some things click with people, others don't. I was great at econ in high school. For some reason, in college, I really struggled with it. And it got to the point, my first test, I didn't do that well. I said, okay, you know, I'm going to wait for the second test. Second test, it, it dropped my overall grade to a D. It was really bad. And, uh, you know, what happened was I started visiting the teacher. I was talking with him, and I actually found out, you know, we had a lot in common and everything. And uh, he actually even, because he's doing his PhD right now, I still need to look at it, honestly. I feel bad about it. But I even asked if I could see his thesis, and he gave me, you know, a rough draft of his thesis to look at because it's, uh, it, you know, it's actually related to piracy and such, and I was really interested in it, and we had talked about it a bit. And uh, he even wanted me to help him out with some sources if I could, so... Uh, that's why, and if you're at, if you're interested in anything we talked about, uh, I have another pi uh, another uh, commentary called "Let's Talk About Piracy." I'd recommend that, and that's kind of a bit like what the uh, the whole PhD thesis is about. But anyways, what happened was just like every week, every other week, I was visiting him. Whenever I didn't understand something, I asked him. Whenever I, you know, whenever we had study guides for the test, I asked him things. After the tests, I would look over. I'd have him. Uh, go over with me what I didn't understand, and he would help me out. And at the end of the class, I got a B. I went from a D to a B. And honestly, here's the thing. Not only I really worked harder in there, and I was able to understand things more, but I should have gotten a C in that class. I totaled up my grade, even after the curve and everything, and I was a few points away from getting a B. But you know what? Well, he end he ended up giving me a B. I was supposed to get a C, but he gave me a B. Now, that is not cheating. That is not gaming the system. Because, see, at the end of the day, the teacher is allowed to decide whatever they think on it. So, for example, if they want to give a particular student a better grade and they have the reasons to and they can back them, they are allowed to do that. That is not cheating. And he even said that to me. He said, I am the one at the end who decides to, you know, give you the, the deciding grade and everything. And I see that you have earned a B, so you get a B. Now, if I never spoke with him and I boost up my grade, I probably would have gotten a C. And here's why. You see, when teachers get to know you, they get some sympathy for you. And they feel bad. For example, if you're in there and at the end of the semester, a teacher looks at their stuff, their, their record book, and they say, Oh, you know, man, Mr. Mario was in here like every other week and he worked so hard. And he is like three points away from getting an A. And this could really change his GPA. You know what? 
Even though he has a B, I'm going to give him those three extra points. While it's with other people, you might go on to the next person and be like, okay, John Doe, well, he's like six points away from getting an A, but uh, I don't know who the hell this guy is, so I'm pretty sure he's happy at a B, and they'll give, give him a B just like that. Those are the things I really recommend, and if you could do those, it's great. It will really help you out. Just trust me on that, you guys. Just trust me. It really, really helps. <laughs> Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you for watching and staying tuned for another college pro tip. And uh, hope I helped you all out with this.